Welcome to video number 28 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. This is part two of our introduction to automatic routing without a route. Welcome back. In the last tutorial, we presented an introduction to automatic routing. We talked about what it is and what it can and cannot do. We also talked about the essential role that stations play in automatic routing. And we touched on some of the things we can do to influence how automatic routing operates. Now I had intended that we would create our first station in this tutorial, but I realized there's a little bit more that we need to cover and to recap on and to emphasize to get a good overall picture of what automatic routing without a route is all about. If we're clearer about that now, it will help to bring together all the individual elements that make up automatic routing. One of the challenges of presenting a tutorial on automatic routing and on stations is in conveying the importance of the interaction between the various parameters that are responsible for how an automatic route behaves. There is an interaction between the settings in blocks, trains, train types, stations and other parameters that we can use to predetermine certain behaviours of the train that is using an automatic route. When I talk about automatic routing, I actually mean automatic routing without a route. That is its more accurate and complete description. Because in this mode we operate the train without a route being selected in the route box down here. So you must always ensure that you have no route selected when you are operating a train in automatic routing without a route, which is different to running a train in the automatic mode that you can select up here. You remember we can run instant routes and train routes in these different modes here, one of which is the automatic mode, and that is different to automatic routing without a route. You will still see that iTrain puts it into the automatic mode, but no route should be selected here. It means iTrain takes control of the train, doing everything apart from pressing the button to start and stop the route. iTrain creates and selects its own route rather than us deciding what the route is, as we would do in an instant route or in a train route. For iTrain to be able to accurately control the trains and to be able to make intelligent decisions, it uses information from a variety of sources to determine the route that the train will take and the speeds that it travels at in different locations, and where and for how long it will wait at stations, etc. However, a predetermined behaviour for a particular train or train type can be crafted by ourselves with careful setting of various interacting parameters. How these different parameters interact 
and the effect that they have on an automatic route will be revealed over the next few videos. Those videos will need to be considered as a whole and not just in isolation. So please try to keep this in mind as you watch the tutorials. With luck, things will start to make sense as the tutorials progress and everything will hopefully come together as we near the end of this subset of videos. But it's also important to stress that these tutorials should not be considered a substitute for reading the manual. The manual is the Bible and contains many more details on the various subjects. Automatic routing brings together a lot of what we've learnt in the previous tutorials. So I think it is worth having a quick recap to jog our memories because this is fundamental to understanding automatic routing and how we can influence its behaviour. Whenever we use an instant route, a train route or an automatic route, iTrain uses a concept called trains to control the rolling stock. A train can consist of one or more locos plus any wagons and coaches. A locomotive provides the motive force in a train. Even if we want iTrain to take control of just a single loco on its own, that single loco needs to be defined as a train. But before we can define a train, we need to define the locomotive. We create the locomotive using the locomotive editor, providing details about its name, its motive power and its length, its speed profile, its inertia simulation, its feedback offset and its reaction delay. All of which allow iTrain to accurately control the locomotive. In the permissions tab we can further define which parts of the layout this particular loco can have access to by appending block names in this list down here where we choose the block from this drop down menu. And lastly we tick the active box here so that the locomotive can be seen and used on the layout. Next we create a train using the trains editor. Here we define its name its train type and its composition. And in this list here, using the append and insert, we can add and remove additional coaches or wagons, change the locomotive that is running the train, make up a consist, etc. etc. And the composition determines the length of the train. And similar to the loco profile we have the permissions tab where we can define where the train can and cannot have access to. You'll see later that these various permissions tabs can play an important role in automatic routing. Remember Locos and wagons can be reassigned to other trains, but can't be on more than one train at the same time, of course. If we decouple a loco and or wagons from a train and attach it to another loco, the train name 
does not change. The only thing that changes is the content of the train. The last thing we should remind ourselves about is train types. And of course, we use the train types editor to create our various train types. A train type is a category of trains. Train types are used to specify specific properties just once per train type instead of per train, but also to indicate a kind of train in relation to a station. And this is key to the operation of automatic routes and stations, because per station we can specify which train types are allowed to make a stop at that station, and if so, for how long. We can create as many types of trains as we like. For example, a cargo train, an express passenger train, a shuttle train, a milk train, a nuclear haulage train, and this is how we specify the behaviour of a particular train type. In the train types editor, we specify its name, we can set a maximum speed, we can determine some block details including reservation count, reserve start, priority, and we can also set how the train is aligned to the platform. We can either have it aligned to the platform or it can stop at its default stop positions, which are usually at the start or the end of a block. And here again, we have another permissions tab. So we can determine where this particular train type has access to. Having created all our train types, we then associate each of our trains to a train type by going back to the trains editor. We select the particular train and then here we have a drop down menu where all the train types are listed and we select a train type based on the type of behaviour that we want this train to have. And the train then takes on the additional characteristics of that train type. More importantly, as we'll see in future videos, when we get to the stations, you'll see that there is a tab called train types in the station. And from here, we can select each of the different train types. So for each station, we can specify which train types can and cannot use that station. So that was just a little refresher to remind ourselves where a lot of the settings and parameters are that we can use in automatic routing. And that's the end of this overview, which hopefully has set the scene and has jogged your memory about the various things we've done in past tutorials. In the next tutorial, we will see how to create a station and how to select the blocks that it contains. Then there will be individual tutorials on each of the parameters of a station. Starting with the type field, then with the selection field, then going through the blocks tab and explaining what each of these columns mean, then the train types tab and 
options looking at the threshold. Some of the videos will be longer than others, but by creating individual videos, it will make it easier to find a particular topic in the future. We will then start bringing things together with tutorials about creating an operational plan for the layout by defining the role and tasks that we want each station to perform. Then we will create each of the stations and set their properties so that they perform the desired roles during automatic routing without a route. And we will test them all, modifying them when necessary. So there will be quite a few tutorials on this subject, but keep in mind they will need to be considered as a whole and not simply as individual videos. In that way, you will gain a better understanding of the interaction between the parameters and therefore gain the skills to intelligently craft things so that automatic routes behave in the manner that we want them to. So that's all for now. See you in the next tutorial where we create the station. It's available to view now. Hope to see you then. Take care. Thanks for watching.